All right, so I have Triple C here, live from uh, Portugal. Um, how's it going, man? What are you doing down there? Oh, man, I'm out here just smelling my farts, bro, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> you know, enjoying, enjoying the weather, getting away from the Arizona heat, um, enjoying my family. And uh, that's it, man. Just, you know, went to the Olympics, had a good time there in Paris, had a chance to see a lot of people. Um, and uh, everything, everything is fine, man. So I'm in, I'm in Europe, dude. So I've been drinking with my, with my pinky out, guys. So you guys, you guys might get used to it. Yeah, a little coming back with uh, some new techniques on drinking coffee. I like it. Uh, how was the Olympics? Is that something I know? Obviously, you competed. Um, have you attended pretty much consistently since then, or is this kind of a rarity for you? No, I have been. I've, I've, I've been, uh, I've been going to the Olympics for about the majority of. You know, since I competed, I went to 2008 Beijing. Obviously, I competed in it. Uh, uh, London, Beijing skipped skipped real like I'm sorry, skipped Japan like everybody else for the for the COVID for the COVID year. And then again, 2024 for Paris. I'm just a fan. Man. I'm just a fan of uh, of competition, and I love what uh, and I love what 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 comp what the competition at the highest level is. Man, I saw the 1500. I was there live or. They thought the the returning Olympic champ was more likely going to win, and then he had the number one guy in the world with the bag with the world record, and all of a sudden, the American kicks you know kicks at the right stride and beats them both. You know what I'm saying? So I I enjoy studying like high level competition, and uh, you know that that's why I go to. I'm just a fan of sports, but in general, the two things that really come to mind is like track and field, and uh, and the sport of wrestling. Yeah, I was curious if you also, like, if you attended other things besides wrestling. Yeah. No, so just track and field, keep up with a little bit of boxing. Yeah. I, I, I know Uzbekistan, they, they, uh, they, they freaking, they won seven out of the eight or seven weight classes. Uh, but that's that's about it. That's cool, man. Do you get nostalgic watching that or? Um, a little bit, a little bit. I, I think once you watch somebody win an Olympic gold medal, for their country, I mean, it's it's precious, dude. It's special. It's uh, it's a lifelong dream. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't like the UFC where I'm gonna promote this guy because he's got a beautiful left hook and a kick, and and he sells, and he's got a mouthpiece on him. This is can you show up every four years? One, can you make the Olympic team? Two, can you show up on that day to become the absolute best in the world? And that's not always the case. You know, you could be the best in the world the year prior, but when it comes to that specific day, you're hurt, you're sick, uh, somebody died, can you still show up? And that's why I love the Olympics. Yeah, absolutely, man, no doubt. Well, you're getting around, Mr. Worldwide. You got a bunch of stuff coming up, which we'll dive into, but uh, let's talk about United Fight League a little bit. Um, next Friday in Chandler, Arizona, you and Frank Mir doing a little bit of a team battle. Um, for people that aren't familiar, UFL uh, is a kind of an up and coming promotion. They've held mostly shows in Arizona so far, right? So how did you get involved with them? It's a little bit of a different thing, like I said, with going head to head with another team. It's Phoenix, I believe it's Phoenix versus Vegas, right? So uh, kind of a, a unique take on some MMA here. Yeah, no, for sure, man. So it's it's going to be team, team Las Vegas versus Team Phoenix. I am the, I am the head coach for Team Phoenix. Uh, you know, we're going to be having former UFC fighters like, you know, Hunter Azor, uh, you know, Shamo Arias, just just to name a couple. And then Frank Mir has his team. So it's it's something that we really want to showcase and bring the best talent out of our city. It's going to be city versus city. So the way it's going to work is it's going to be $50,000 on the line for the winning team. And the way it works is if you're able to knock out your opponent in round one, you get four points. Round two, you get three. Round three, you get two. And if it's decision, you get one. At the very end, you know, you can have the majority of the guys to win, but if they all win decision, if there's a couple guys out of the five that ended up knocking uh, the other opponents out, then that means they win. So the winning team gets paid $50,000. And I love what they're doing because it's going to be, you know, it's going to be, we're not, we're not going to be picking guys from different parts of the world. It's like, no, have you been a resident of your city? And how long have you been in your city? And, and, and that's how you determine whether you can fight and you can represent that city. So I think, uh, you know, uh, myself and everybody from F3 and, and UFL, we've been working really, really hard. It's been an idea that we've had for 
the last year or so that we've been working on it. First, we want to do gym versus gym, and maybe that's something that we can do in the near future. But as of now, it's city versus city, and bring the best that are not in the UFC or or PFL or Bellator, and let's and let's fight, man. A lot of these guys are all former champions that have fought for the biggest organizations. I think that's what UFL is trying to do: is bring the best guys, bring the best talents, and let them fight city versus city. Yeah, and how long have you been involved with them? Is this, uh, I think I've seen you do stuff with them before, right? Yeah, so I, I've been I've been involved with uh, with UFL and, and F3 now for about at least a year, you know, a little over a year now. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, our CEO and president, you know, Harrison Rogers, he's uh, he's super passionate about the sport, man. He's given, you know, all, all of the fighters that fight for UFL have free medical care, and, and, you know, if they, if they need surgery, wherever that may be, he's got them covered. You know, any of these guys have injuries or anything that happens with them in the fight, like they got 100%, everything's covered. You know, soldier, a shoulder surgery, knee, whatever that may be, he's got you covered. And I think that's one thing that Rampage and Frank Mir and, and Harrison Roger, they brought to the table was, you know, injuries or whatnot. A lot of these guys cannot afford the game. They cannot, but Harrison is able to, you know, put the C together and, and, and give these guys health care, which is which is super cool. Yeah, for sure. It's a great card. Um, you know, I work for Tapology too. We load in all sorts of events from around the world. And I think this one's kinda you know, this promotion stood out as putting on some pretty legit fights with some pretty great names as well. So that's uh August thirtieth. It's gonna be on Kick and Rumble and YouTube as well. So um Big stuff coming up there. Uh, I guess let's talk about you a little bit. You, you were at the Olympics. Um, you've got this coming up. Uh, when are we going to see Henry Cejudo, the competitor, back in the cage, man? I know that's a question everybody's wondering. Your name's getting dropped a little bit here and there. I'm not sure yeah. if you've, you've seen some of the headlines, but um, what's what's the competitive career looking like right now? Uh, yeah, right now, dude, I, I've been icing an injury, man. I've um, I've been icing an injury now for quite some for quite some time, and. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm that I'm 100 percent on getting back into training. So I think even right now, it's not even so much based on, uh, you know, it's just allowing this injury to freaking heal, dude. You know, father type is real, dude. I can finally admit it. And uh, it's just little nagging things. But I think in this particular thing, I want to make sure that I don't have to get surgeon. If I allow myself to be patient and take my time, allow my injury to recover, then I'm going to be 100 percent. You know, could I fight? I, I could, but. Am I going to do the same thing I did in my last fight to fight with the torn, torn growing? Uh, I'm not going to do that no more. So I think I've learned my lesson and, uh, and that's it. You know, once I'm ready, I mean, there's a lot of options, man. There's uh there could be a potential return at flyweight. There's a lot of things that I'm, that I'm contemplating of may, potentially going back down, you know, with the, with the bandwidth division getting hot and, you know, and, and, and newcomers that kind of, kind of coming in, like, you know, I, I, there's been a lot of thought of potentially me going back down, man. And, uh, you know, getting getting a fight with Moreno, like winning the belt once again. And uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. Or, you know, these are these are things that I really want to kind of think about and really decide once I get home, once, I, once I'm injury-free. And it's, it's not – it's just one little thing. Uh, it's just one little thing. But, uh, you know, it's a major thing because, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be making a commitment. And I've, I'm going to be making a commitment – to, uh, to go out there and just do another run, to do another run at these titles and uh, dedicate myself like I once did before. It's, I tell people all the time that it's different being a father, man. it's different being a dad. I was the most selfish human you could ever think of. And as you can tell, like my daughter was just sitting with me. You know, she's uh, she loves her dad. And, uh, you know, the, the time spent, all my time that I do is, is with my family, traveling, training, and working. You know, that's it. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a big sacrifice on all of our parts, uh, you know, these uh, these next fights, because, you know, I'm, I'm committed to uh, to get back to the to the to the triple C once again. Yeah. And just hearing you talk and, and saying, you know, you got to get right. And maybe you're at a point in your career where you're fighting three times a year isn't necessarily something you can you can do. Um, any regrets about that that period of time that you took away at all? Is, is there any? No. We... No, no, not at all. I think, I think if there's any regrets, is maybe potentially coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I necessarily mean that because, man, when, when you've done everything in combat sports, I mean, the only thing that really motivates you is one another title that, that, that UFC never wanted to give me at 145 pounds, or the next thing was, was money. 
you know, and when you have a family, it's not that I, it's not that I was hurting or anything like that. Cause I'm a pretty smart businessman, dude. I'm in real estate. I own multiple duplexes. Uh, obviously the content that I do on YouTube, I would make a really good living. Um, it just, it changes, man. It changes, man. You want, you want your kids to have the best life. So you, I want a house here and I want a house in Brazil, you know? So I, I think if there's any regret is maybe making that comeback. But I think now making that comeback, now I got to shit where I eat. You know, now I get now it's now it's back to commitment once again. And part of the retirement, I was just got man, I was sick of competition, man. A thousand wrestling matches. Nobody's competed more than me in combat sports. A thousand wrestling matches, winning everything there is in in, in, in wrestling and in combat sports. You know, it's just it was uh and people will never get it. It, it, it was, it's a satisfaction and and even now, you know, yeah, I wish I wouldn't have lost, especially in the fashion that I did my last fight, but you know, I, I respect the game, dude. And and you know, if you, if you take that much time off, you know, there's there's a price to be paid too, man. Like it's, you know, in with the in with, uh out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, absolutely. And is is this? I'm assuming from what you're saying, this is kind of injury. Like you don't want to put a a target date for your return on or anything like that. You just kind of <laughs> taking it day by day. Yeah, 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 pretty much, dude. I, I want to make sure that I'm on it, and then I'm going to pick it, and then I want to talk to the UFC, talk to Ali, because I'm, I'm sincerely thinking about potentially making that return to 125 pounds. You know, the, none of those dudes are, I don't think none of those dudes could hang with me. And, uh, or who knows, man? I think, I, I think there's a lot of fun fights at 35, but I want to, okay, I'm going to I want to make sure that I am, uh, that I'm just injury free before I make these decisions. And then the commitment's going to come in, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to be firing at all cylinders. You see what I'm saying? You, you think I ever had this? Not when, when I was competing, bro. You think uh, you think I was dealing with this, dude? It's it's different, man. I go all in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. The dad life. Um, your old your old buddy uh, Dominic Cruz, though. I recently, I don't know if you saw that headline, has said that he he would like to fight you again. That's not enough to make you stick around at 135. Yeah, maybe. I, I I asked for the UFC, too, to fight it, but they don't want to do it, you know? I asked them. I was like, you know what? Give me Dominic. They're like, I don't want to do that. Talk to Hunter Campbell. He didn't want to do it. Um, But I've already beat that dude. I've already knocked that dude out. I've already made him bend the knee. And I I, I can't get why he would want that rematch. And I'm not opposed to fighting anybody, man. I'm I'm a prize fighter. I want to make the best business decisions possible. But I'm in the position now where I got to find out whether I do want to go down to 125 pounds or – or or continue to keep chasing the belt at 135 pounds. So I want to allow this injury to really kind of, you know, sit in, you know, get disciplined with my nutrition and everything that I'm doing. And, uh, you know, and, and get away from all these vacations as well, start committing once again. And then I can, and then I can really make a logical decision on, on my career. Yeah. And, and speaking of flyweight, like I, I just from, my analyst had, I don't think that's a, a bad idea. You know, you, like you said, it's kind of a, a fresh return and Bantamweight's got a lot going on. So you could probably make a bigger splash quicker. Uh, when you look at that division is, I guess, is there, um, is that kind of it right there? What I laid out or is there more to it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I just feel like right now the next person that's going to be in line to get the title shot is going to be Umar. And th this is my prediction. Uh, Rob Duvalis really is going to stop. Uh, Sean O'Malley at the sphere. He's going to beat him. He's either going to 50 45 him, or maybe not 50 45, because he may lose the first two rounds, or he may lose the, the first round at least. He's going to beat him, but then once Umar comes in, Umar's just going to, he, he's going to have his way with uh, with Marab. He really is, man. Uh, Umar is really good, real technical. Um, and and then I just feel like it's just, it's going to go down the line. You know, Devin Ferreiro is more likely going to fight. A guy like uh, like uh, Peter Young, which is a fight that I wanted, but these guys these guys are chasing uh, uh, a Davis and Figueroa. So where does that leave me, man? Like, am I just gonna fight just to fight, or am I gonna chase something? I'm I'm after gold now, and I think if I do go down 225 pounds, stay disciplined. I just don't think there's there's anybody in the world that can beat me. And plus, I think there's a fun fight with uh, with Brenda Moreno. You know, I think he, you know, he wanted to fight me at 135 and then he backed out like a little bitch. And I think now if I go down and I beat him in Mexico, in his own country, I think that could be a big ass payday too. Yeah, I believe Mexico's on uh, on tap again for next year. They've had some, you know, they had a successful event last year. So that would be pretty amazing. What do you make of Pantoja? 
I, lo- I love Pantoja, man. Like, if there's somebody that I wouldn't want to fight, <laughs> just based on his heart and our friendship, it's, it is Pantoja. And I've always knew that he was, you know, I, I coached him on Tough 24. He was my first pick. It's ironic how it worked. He was my first pick. And uh, he's, just, he's a beautiful human, man. He's a beautiful human, but he also needs to do a better job on promoting the division. He's too nice. He doesn't create these storylines for the flywheel division. He wants to hug and kiss everybody. And I've talked to him about this before, so it's not like I'm telling you something I haven't told him. And uh, people want to see blood, man. People people love the soap opera. People love the novellas. And I think if you bring the King of Cringe back in there, you know, I would definitely, you know, I'm the one that made, I'm the one that said the Flywood Division. I'm the one that made it hot. I can even go back and talk about the Battlewood Division too. How many people wanted to kill me right before I retired? You know, with all these antics that I was doing. And at the end of the day, man, call me a bad guy, call me whatever the hell you want to call me. But I've done some amazing things and I was able to save a division. I enjoy competition. And I think especially now the fact that, you know, I've lost my last two fights. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's humbling for me for sure. But I've also been here before too. Cause the last time I lost two in a row, you know, I went back and went on the rampage and beat Demetrius Johnson, TJ Dillashaw, Marlon Marais, Dominic Cruz. And I became the triple C with no belts to two belts. So, I'm uh, I'm fierce. I love I lo- I love the position that I'm at, and uh, I think the biggest thing for me, Nolan, is I just have to make a decision, man. I have to make a decision on what's going to be best, and talk to Mick Maynard, and 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 see and see what they're thinking, and if they're and if we're all speaking the same language, then then why not? And why not? I, I don't want to be fighting people just to fight people, but I want to get closer to that belt, and I think. Uh, and I think that's the position that I fall in right now. And, and of course, my Dominic Cruz wants it. You know, like I said, I talked to Hunter. I asked for Dominic Cruz, too. And they're like, no, I don't want to do that. And I was like, all right. It's out of my control. It's out of, you know what I'm saying? So the calls don't mean shit to me. You know, I I, I took that dude out in, 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 in two rounds, like I told you guys. So, um, But he can bend the knee, too. I don't care. We can, re- we, we can do it again. <laughs> yeah, and... Have, have they been receptive? Like, have you floated this flyweight idea to Hunter or anybody else? Has it been something that they seem you know, open to? Um, I, I have not. I've only spoken to Ali about it. Um, but if it's something that I do decide to do, it's going to be, uh, you know, so, so the, the biggest thing for me is going to be discipline and, and take myself back there once again. It is the weight cut, you know. But at the same time, is maybe that I've been thinking about it. Maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need more discipline maybe i need to you know what i mean like if, if if the bar is set that high then that means i have to have more commitment on that side you know and, and it's not fun i i hated making that way but i'm also wiser and smarter now and how is it that i could do it and do it in the the, the best scientific way while feeling good and and and, and spice things up but like, like i said man it's, it's an idea that's just floating around and uh and if I do decide to go down to 125 pounds, it's going to be a six-month process. It's going to be a six-month process. I'm going to do it right. And I think there's a lot of fun matchups. And, uh, you know, and ruffle some feathers. Why not? Those flyways need it. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I can't imagine. Like, I know you you proudly uh, wear the the sl- saving the flyway division on your sleeve. But it's really interesting to see the the perspective, I think, from at least the, the fans that watch every week about people getting like excited for some of these prelim flyweight fights or the number 10 and 11 guy fighting, like the perception is definitely different. Like maybe still the, the mainstream audience doesn't have that star to plug into to get excited about. But I think looking at a card now and when, when you see people's breakdowns and people talking about it, like almost always there's a flyweight fight on the card that people are pumped for and it delivers. So is that kind of crazy to, for you to see that perception do a 180? Yeah, of course, man. I feel like I am the king of the flyweight division. And uh, I feel like all these you should be paying at me at least 30% of their damn purse for employing them. So the only thing I could say is you're damn welcome. But anyways, let me ask you, Nolan, what do you think of the idea? What would you do if you're in my position? I mean, I always think like getting a, a new fresh start wouldn't be a bad idea. And like I said, getting going down where there's maybe not as much commotion going on for a guy like you, um, you can get there quicker, you know? If, if you're saying that maybe you're not able to take as many fights per year and you need to heal and stuff like that, like you go down there, you win, you're probably right in the conversation. I mean, name value wise, who else is down there that, that has what you have, but maybe, maybe Brandon. 
you know? And that's a huge fight. Like, if you go down there and fight Brandon, I think that sells itself. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. 100%. Anyways, these are just ideas, and I think Ali might get mad at me for uh, mentioning this stuff, but uh, but it's the truth. No, no, okay, okay. You, you, okay, you want to <laughs> show me? You want to show me? That's me. Say hi. But, How old is she? Uh, yeah. She's uh she's two going on twenty, dude. Yeah. How's the uh <laughs> keeping you busy, right? Yeah, keeping me busy, man. Yeah, but yeah. that but that's the sacrifice, man. At the end of the day, it's gonna be my it's gonna be my family, dude. I, I never intended ever to have kids and fight because I'm too selfish. And being a father has taught me something completely different, man, where it's even if you don't want to, you have to, man. They're your kids. It's your bloodline. So, and and I and, and I love it because it's because it's my kids. But it's gonna be a sacrifice on everybody's part because I am not gonna be the nicest guy if it if it does come down to, you know, we decide to make that decision and that drop. No doubt, man. Well, you've got a lot going on. You have a lot of motivation, a lot to work for. Um, UFL Friday next week, August thirtieth in Chandler. You can watch it on YouTube, Kick and Rumble. Um, what else you got going on? You got the pound for pound podcast with Kamara Usman. Any other projects that you want people to know about? Yeah, no, for sure, man. We, you know, uh, pound for pound, we, you know, to me, you know, no offense to MMA junk and all these other sites, but to me, it's the best podcast right now in the game. It's, it's, you know, it's a podcast for me and Kamara Usman, you know, two good friends. We've known each other for, you know, about a decade and a half now or going on a decade and a half. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good because we have two different perspectives. Even if you watch our last episode, you know, it was just two different perspectives on, on life and fighting and tactics and techniques and, and things like that. But, you know, it's a, a different way to get to the promised land. And uh, it's just a really good podcast, man. If you guys want to tune in, you guys want if you want, you guys want the truth, we're, we're unscripted. It's, it's, we ain't ESPN. We ain't a lot of these sites are gonna be, uh, that we're going to be red flag for. Like, it's, it's what it is. So I'm excited with that. Um, you know, I have a documentary coming out, uh, um, you know, a little film documentary uh, coming out uh, sometime in, uh, you know, sometime right before I do decide to fight. It's going to be taking place in, in, in sometime in October. We're going to start filming. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm doing, my children's books, like motivational children's books for actual real life stories of actual real fighters. Um, you know, telling, having kids now, it's, it's also opened my mind to, it's not just, uh, you know, the cat never catches Tweety. It's, you know, giving them real, real life, real people's lives who have done amazing things in sports. And I feel like, the, the you know, as a parent, the best thing that you want to do for your kid is, uh, is inspire them. Inspire them and tell them the truth without, you know, without being, you know, rated R. But this is, this is what life is. And this is how this per this is where this person came from. And this is how they made it. So just beautiful messages from 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 great people to inspire our young ones. Um, just a lot, man. I, I'm even I even I'm, I'm even pushing for a for a for a for a Spanish podcast too, man. For everybody that calls me a fake Mexican, I wanna um, I wanna give back to that community and and share my knowledge too in Spanish. I mean, I that was pretty much my first language. You know, I hablo bien español. I speak Portuguese as well. And uh, I just want to be able to give back to the community and uh, yeah, do something that I actually enjoy doing without without breaking my back. Yeah, I love it, man. Obviously, a ton going on. Henry, appreciate you taking the time out, man. Uh, enjoy the rest of your stay in Portugal. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking again pretty soon. Okay, I appreciate it, Noah. Hey, Noah, do me a favor, man, and get that, uh, you know, go ahead and freaking put down that damn flag, man. Put a Phoenix Suns flag <laughs> behind you, please. Hey, this is the year I'm going to, if I'm going to have a flag up, the Celtics flag, this is the year to do it. I get 365 <laughs> days until somebody else wins or the Celtics win again. And then I get to renew for another year. I think that's how it works. Shit, man. I, I tell you what, bro. I wasn't, I wasn't expected. Dude, I thought, I thought the, I thought the Dallas Mavericks were going to go in there and clean shop, dude. Jesus. Yeah, I was, I was a little nervous too. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pull revisionist history here, but um, the C's have these contracts locked up, man. So, uh they might be triple C in themselves pretty soon, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, bro. Well, I appreciate it, Nolan. Have a good day, bro. Thank yeah. you for having me on. Yeah, you too, Henry. Thanks, man.